Hi folks, we're going to take a look at page 157, number 16. So here they tell us that they give us a sheet of metal that's twice as long as it is wide uh, and has an area of 800 meters squared. And they want us to find the dimensions of the rectangular box that would contain a maximum volume. So we're looking to maximize the volume if it was constructed by cutting out squares of equal area on all four corners. Okay, so this is a, this is a you know problem we've seen before. So let's set it up. Uh, it does seem a little different, though, from maybe the one that you would have solved earlier. So I'm going to just cut out these squares here. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to maximize the volume of the box that's created. So the volume is just length times width times height. And the idea here is that this here is the length. This here is going to be the width. Okay, so this whole thing rectangle is the base and then we're flipping over all of these sides so this little part here say we call it x ends up being the height of the box all right but i believe the question we would have solved in the past would have actually given us uh some specific um, uh, dimensions for the sheet of paper that we were working with and here they don't give us um, a specific dimension okay but i do know that the length of the paper or the length of the sheet of metal is twice as long as it is wide. So here, maybe what I'll do is I'll use lowercase w here just to distinguish it from the width of the box that's created. And so this is going to be 2w. All right. And so I'm seeing a bit of a problem because I've got three variables here. And then I kind of have to bring in this variable x. And it just feels as though to describe everything that I'm working with, there's just going to be almost more variables. So let's see if we can use this area here. So I know that 800 represents the area of the sheet. Okay. So the area of the sheet is 800. All right. But what is the area sheet made up of? Well, length times width. So it's just going to be 2w times w, which is equal to 800. But then I realize, oh, I can actually solve for this value w, because this is just 2w squared equals 800, meaning that w is equal to plus or minus the square root of 800 over 2. Of course, I'm not interested in the negative square root, and 800 over 2 is 400, and the square root of 400 is just 20. So essentially, this is going to be exactly like that problem we solved before, except we had to do a little work beforehand, okay? Because now what I have is that this width here, is 20 meters and this length here for the whole sheet okay is just going to be of course 2w is just 40 is going to be equal to 40 and so now i'm going to have a problem that's almost identical to what we solved earlier because i can come up with a uh, model for the volume of this box using only x because what is the length going to be well it's going to be the total length of the sheet 40 minus an x on both sides so 40 minus 2x and then here i'm going to have the width of the sheet is 20 minus another 2x all right and then we said the height of the box is just going to be equal to x and this is something i can work with all right so let's expand it before we find the domain here. So what do we have? We have, well, 40 times 20 is 800. Okay, don't forget the times x, so 800x. Then we have negative 80 minus 40, so negative 120x, and then times another x, so x squared, so minus 120x squared, and then negative 2x times negative 2x is 4x squared, and of course times the other x, so plus 4x cute. All right. And there's my model. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out what the domain of, um, uh, of this function or this model is going to be. Okay. So this is where I, I think I want to focus on the smaller dimension here of 20. Because remember what we're doing is we're cutting off this little square of uh, length x. And of course, it could be, you know, a bigger square, a smaller square. But we realize that the value of x can't be more than half of the width of this box. Because if, say, x was equal to 11, then just what I'm cutting off is going to be 11 on one side, 11 on the other side. That's impossible. Okay. And in fact, it can't be equal 
to half because if it were 10, well, I'd just have a straight line here because I'd be cutting off 10 from the top, 10 from the bottom. I'd be cutting off the whole width of the sheet, okay? So that tells me that uh, uh, X needs to be strictly greater than zero because it's a measure of length, but it needs to be uh, strictly less than 10, all right? So here we have zero less than X less than 10. All right, so now we have our model in terms of one variable. We have our domain. Now we can start doing some calculus. So V prime is equal to 800, and this is going to be minus 240X, and this is going to be plus 12X squared. And, of course, we want to solve this equal to zero. Okay. Um, well, I know 240 is going to be divisible by 12. Not, not that this is necessary since it looks like I'm going to use a quadratic formula likely. So let's just see 800 divided by 12 is not easily divisible. So let's see if it's divisible by 6. Okay, no. So let's see 800 divided by 4. Well, I know that's going to be divisible by 4. So there you go, 200. So I'm going to factor out a 4 here. Um, so what are we left with? 200. Okay, minus 240 divided by 4 is just going to be 60x, and then plus 3x squared. So at least we're working with smaller numbers, all right? And I'm just going to divide both sides by 4, so I'll still have the 0 on the other side. All right, so now uh, I could try to take a quick look. I'm not going to bother see if this is uh, nicely factorable. I'm just going to go straight to the quadratic formula. So what do we have? We have 60. Okay, plus or minus, square root of 60 squared, minus 4 times 3 times 200, all over 2 times 3, which is 6. Uh, so here, equal to 60, plus or minus, and let's see what that gives us in the square root. All right, so 60 squared, minus 4 times 3 times 200. Okay, gives us something positive, so that's good. Okay. Oops, 1,200. And now let's uh, approximate here, see if we have one or two answers. So let's do uh, 60 plus uh, square root of 1,200, okay? And then divide by 6, and that gives us 15.8, okay? And then let's see if the other one gives me a positive answer, 60 uh, minus the square root of 1,200, Okay, divided by 6 gives me 4.2. Okay, so we've got two possible answers, both positive, but this is where I realize that 15.8 is not going to be in my domain. So we'll eliminate that one there. So this is my only uh, critical point uh, in that uh, open interval. And given that it's an open interval, I'm going to have to justify that this is indeed uh, going to give me a... Uh, an absolute maximum here because we're looking for maximum volume. So I'm only interested between 0 uh, and 10. All right. And I have my critical point at 4.2. And let's see what happens. Let's stick in x equals 1 here. So where's my derivative? Okay. So 800 minus 240 plus 12 is definitely going to be positive. I'm not going to bother checking that out. Okay. And let's uh, try 5. Okay. This one here I will put in the calculator, though. So what do we have? We have 800 minus 240 times 5 plus, uh, where is it? Plus uh, 12 times 5 squared, so 12 times 25. And we have something that's negative. Okay? But since this is the only place that the derivative can change sign, I know that... From 0 to 4.2, the function is continually increasing to my local maximum. And then from 4.2 all the way to 10, I know it's always decreasing. So in fact, on this open interval, this uh, local minimum is in fact an absolute, sorry, this local maximum is an absolute maximum. All right, so let's take a look at what they were looking for. So if I look at the question up here, I see that they want us to find the dimensions. So it means we need, uh, and it's of the box. All right. So we know that the height was going to be equal to X. So that's 4.2 meters. Okay. The length we remember is uh, 40 minus 2X. So let's just do uh, 40 minus uh, 2 times 4.2. 
Okay, 0.4, and that's 31.6. And then the width is just going to be 20 minus 2x. So 20 minus 2 times 4.2, and that gives me 11.6 meters. All right. So uh, this was actually very similar to a problem we'd already seen before. Uh, the difference here was we had to do a little, little bit of work. They didn't give us the length and width of the sheet that's being used directly. However, knowing that the width was twice, uh, sorry, that the length was twice the width, and knowing the full area of the whole sheet of metal, we were able to determine W and hence 2W. And then from there, we were able to solve the problem using this X, the amount that we're cutting off as our uh, input variable. All right, that's it for this one.